What's up guys and welcome back to the episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 20. We've got some great news to start today's episode off. Yes, Vinicius is finally coming back to training. Man, we have been missing the Brazilian centre half big time. His absence really struggling defensively. Uh, today we're turning on the back of the win against Sheffield Wednesday. We've got huge games today, man. We've got both legs to carry. We've got semi-final at home and away. First away at Anfield against Liverpool. Uh, we'll have the FA Cup fourth round draw and that game as well. Plus, with 40 mil in the budget and the rest of the transfer window to play, we might well make one or two more signings with more big Premier League games to come as well. Loads to get through and we'll start off with this. The first leg of our EFL Cup semi-final. First, we've gone in this competition as we travel to Anfield for the first of the two-legged affair. Big clash to start off with. Come on, you Jarrys. Luis Diaz looking for space. Oh, what a ball. What a ball that is. And Rodrigo turns in the opener. What a ball that is. Unbelievable assist. You know I'm a sucker for a nice assist. Luis Diaz, when you talk about threading the needle, oh, inch perfect trajectory, placement and timing. For Rodrigo to run into, uh, sorry, yeah, for Rodrigo to run onto and smash home. Liverpool in front before the break. Defended really well in this first half, but yeah, without Vinicius, we're a different breed. Liverpool in front. I've never been so reliant on one defender in, in my entire time doing career mode saves, I don't think. I, you know, there's been times where I've been, oh, referee. Every times where I've been reliant on a striker or a forward, but not a centre half. But that's Alex Scott. Going down and staying down. Hopefully that would be a bruise. It was a ferocious tackle. Uh, but hopefully just a bruise for uh, the ex-Bristol City man who's come on leaps and bounds since changing to uh, to a DLP in this team. As Cunha is denied by Kelleher and Liverpool will clear. Plenty of game to go. Oof. Plenty of tie to go. So looking for Pedri, unsurprisingly so as well. I have to say, should this have been a red? Should this have been a red? I mean, come on, that's, I, I have to say, I personally think on on another day, that possibly could have been a, uh, a straight red card, and it was indeed an injury for Scott as well. I'll keep him out there for now, but I'll keep an eye on it too, as the long throw is flicked away by John with Teep. Scott keeps the chance alive, will get it back and feed it through. There's Matty Cash, chance for the leveller, whipped into Solanke, didn't really catch it clearly. 32 minutes to go and a whole second leg to play as well. I'm not concerned about this. I often say it, the sign of a good team is when they can win when they haven't played well. One defence splitting through ball, which was sublime to be fair, and finish is what separates the sides. Where would a mini storm in that second half and win the first leg at Anfield? Not too concerned. Not too concerned. It's only our second loss in eight games in all competitions, and there's a whole second leg to play. The key is just not capitulating. Yeah, we all have setbacks and moments of loss. The key is making sure we don't dwell on it, we learn from it, and we bounce straight back. Let's do that in the following games. Alex Scott's injury was just a bruise. Everton at Goodison Park as you're going to get a big win here. And finally, finally start a winning run in the Premier League. Lord knows we need one. Come on, you cherries. Got to keep playing, keep playing. Yes, well, it, mate. That's what it's still tied at no, no. You know, that moment there where Clark sprinted at full speed. Some people ask me, for those that, that may not play career mode that much or, or don't play it at all, you might not know why. Oh, Solanke fires wide. That high defensive work rate is something I always try and put on all of my players in every single position. And it's because uh, players exert more effort when running uh, back on defense or running for loose balls if they've got a higher defensive work rate. So a lower defensive work rate means that they exert less energy uh, on the defensive end, tracking back like moments there uh, in order to win it back. They've got a high defensive work rate. They put in as much uh, energy, if you will, as they would when on the offensive end. So, yeah, as someone who's uh, is all about defense, who uh, he likes the defense, as Luna makes a great save there, it's, um, it's, it's key for all of my players to have a high defensive work rate, if I can get it to them. Anyway, still no, no. Good, good game this so far. Question is, who's going to break that deadlock? I feel as though it could be separate which to won this game. Whoever gets the first might go on to win this. Clark, Solanke, our top two players this season. And Dominic Solanke this time gets it on target, only to be denied. Still 0-0, but surely that first goal is coming. Oh, no, 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 James Garner. Oh, what a flick. Oh, Luna, what a save. I can't believe it's... Oh, flag was up anyway. I was going to say, I can't believe it's still 0-0. Excellent stop by Andre. Not that it would have mattered had it gone in anyway. But still, this has been a really good contest. Neither side. Oh, what a ball! 
Friend group, yes! Able to break the deadlock until now. Friend group. I don't think it's got a single goal for the club until that Carabao Cup quarter. He's now got two in three starts, I think. Bournemouth in front. Yeah, I know those losses and those setbacks and those failures hurt and they sting. I get it. No one knows more about it than me. Oh, but just learn from those lessons and build on that. <sighs> Come on. And what was the lesson we needed to learn? Got to defend better. Got to get stopped. Simple as that. And it seems to really get a clean sheet in this game and get the two goals that will see us get the win as well. A quick fire double from the Cherries, but for Beto, back at his old stomping ground. Oh, what an assist. And what a lovely goal with Jack Clark. Smacking it in with the Trevader. Bournemouth. Going to make it just only three, uh, sorry, two losses in nine. And finally, finally starting to get a foothold and put some points back on the board as well. We ain't giving up in this race for a Champions League place. And as we advance through, there we go. We've got the FA Cup last 32 drawn. And we've got Wrexham away from home at the race course ground. Uh, as we'll take on uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McKelney's Wrexham in uh, in North Wales. I mean, that's the first time I've faced Wrexham in, the, uh, in FC24. Looking forward to that. Should be good. Is there a real stadium in the game? We'll find out soon enough. But before we get there, second leg of the EFL Cup semi. Heading back to Dorset. Training by one, but still believe we can turn this tie on its head. And finally, after a three-month layoff, Vinicius is back. Lord knows we have missed him. Let's hope he'll be the difference maker tonight. Come with you, Cherries. You might notice, once again, I've gone with uh, Nato between the sticks for this one here. It's final season for the club in his uh, mid to late 30s now, declining rapidly, but he's my, he's my EFL Cup goalkeeper, you know. Uh, we, we talk about how a lot of teams now operate with a, uh, a Cup goalkeeper and a League goalkeeper. We were talking about Kelleher uh, last Sunday, and um, it was funny. I, I, I made a claim and I said, oh, I think Kelleher is uh, possibly the best Cup goalkeeper in the Premier League, deputy goalkeeper, and then he conceded four at Old Trafford. Not that I think he could have done anything about the goals, but that's classic Doxy Void, that is. But Jack Clark, this is classic Clark, Jack getting away from his man and smashing it past Allison between the sticks tonight. Bournemouth in front, early goal, early lead. And level on aggregate. Yep, I believe we can turn this tie on its head. And that's why I wasn't panicking despite the loss at Anfield. Plenty of this game and tie to play. Corner. Liverpool. Rodrigo's going to take it short to Mo Salah just off the bench. And his cross is dangerous. It's fisted away by Nato. Chance kept alive. It will drop to John with tape. There's Luis Diaz, the Colombian, who shoots. And Nato makes a great save. As we're still leading by one and tied on aggregate. But Liverpool now starting to assert themselves and look for that goal to get in front. Diaz gets away. Luis Diaz shot blocked again as they continue to look for the South American. As we're still holding on to as things stand, what would be a penalty shootout. It's, it's all Liverpool right now. I just cannot get a foothold here. As Diaz is causing the problems right now. Liverpool, they're just looking for him. They're just, they're just looking for him at every opportunity. Once again, they're going to go to the left-hand side. And still drop to Pedri. Pedri rolls it across. What a block. Vinicius will drop to Diaz. Controls on the chest. Back to the edge. There's Conrad Lima. Shot blocked by Alex Scott. And we shall get it away. Vinicius Sousa, once again, the difference maker. He's been out for three months. And tonight, he's been a brick wall in the back line. Oh, how we have missed him. And there it is. It's pens. It is pens. We get the clean sheet. We get the win on the night. But it is going down the spot kicks. And I do not fancy our chance. We won at Anfield on our way to the FA Cup final last year on pens. But after losing the Community Shield on spot kicks, I'm not feeling confident. Can we pull it off? from penalties. So first man up will be Dominic Solanke. And I trust Dom. I trust Dom. It's saved. <laughs> it's always the way. Rodrigo. Oh, I, just, I swear, man. I talked about this in the last episode. I go the right way so often. Do you guys have the same experience as me? Do you, are you guys finding that this year as well? You often go the right way as Matthias Cunha gets us back on level terms. You go the right way, but you just can't make the save as Mo Salah Puts it down the middle and it's 2-1. It happens so often to me this year, man. And I guess it just adds to the challenge. Jack... Oh, no!
Hanging up, it's over. Cody Gakpo, saved by NATO. Lifeline handed to us by the club captain. And now Pedro NATO needs to score, though. God does. 2-2. Two, two. All right, it's not over yet. Luis Diaz, he was brilliant in that second half. Oh, it's as cool as you like, man. Chips it down the middle. And the Colombian has given Alisson the chance to send Liverpool through. Can we say, by the way, how, how good has Luis Diaz been this season for Liverpool? For all, for all the, the difficult things he's had to go through. Fair play, honestly, as Dan Neal tries to keep us breathing. And does. And does. But we need a stop. We need a save. We need the vet to force sudden death. If he can't make the save, Pedri will send Liverpool through. Oh, it's an awful penalty. It's an awful... Okay, all right. Alex Scott. Yes! And Bournemouth battling back from the brink to possibly make it through. Conrad Lima must score. Otherwise, Bournemouth are heading... To the Carabao Cup final. Oh, yes! Get in! What a comeback! The veteran! Life in those old bones, yeah! NATO mobbed by his teammates. Bournemouth battling back from the abyss to make the Carabao Cup final. Two dreadful penalties in a row, let's be honest. But the cherries... This is why you don't give up no matter how deep and dark of a hole you find yourself in, man. Bournemouth from the abyss, from the brink, battle back to make the final. Oh my goodness gracious, that was class, mate. One of the, one of the moments of the series, no doubt about that was brilliant. That was so good. It's Arsenal. It will be Arsenal in the final after they overcame Manchester United 3-2 on Arrogant. All right, EFL Cup final, Bournemouth's first ever, and it pits us against the Gunners. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That was amazing. Honestly, that was so good. And, and Vinicius as well, man. Clean sheet in the 90 minutes there to ensure we would, uh, well, play, play a big part in us holding on to the, uh, the penalty shootouts. We'll turn down that bid there from last Palomar's for... Friend group. Oh, that was incredible. When Diaz chipped that penalty in the coolness there from the Colombian, I thought, ah, oh, it's over. It is over. But NATO coming up big, life in those old bones. Yeah, right, following game. Uh, Wrexham away, their real stadium isn't in the game then, but we'll take on the Football League side with big ambitions, just like us, as we both try and make the last 16 of the FA Cup. Come on, you cherries. 0 0, 39 minutes in. As we look for that. First goal, Dan Neal's given space and oh, clips the top of the crossbar. Scored two against Preston in the EFL Cup quarters from range. Almost got another one there. Still no, no. Wrexham as things stand holding us and as things stand set for a replay. It's the one thing we really don't want. Tyler to Dan Neal. And Jack Clark now giving space. His shot block just can't. Yeah, oh, no, we get that opening until we do. Clark hits the post. Second time with the woodwork. And the Welsh side hanging on in there. 20 minutes to find a, re uh, find a winner and, and, and not see this contest go to a replay. Endorse it. Come on, come on. Still time. Jaden Anthony. Lovely ball. Oh, it's got to be. It is Dom Solanke. Leaves it late, but surely puts Bournemouth in the hat for our FA Cups last 16. Finally, the pressure pays off. And I, you know, I often say this, but if you're doing all the right things and you just haven't had the reward yet, don't change what you're doing. Just believe eventually, eventually it's going to work out for you. And more often than not, it will. Firm believer in that. Lesson for sport, gaming, and also real life as well. I know it's hard, guys, but I, uh, I, I believe it's the right philosophy. Back yourself. Don't stop believing yourself, man. And believe that eventually it's, uh, it's going to pay off. That's the breakthrough. And once we got the one, that's all we needed. We're not, we're not going to need another one, but if we do get one, that will do it. Rico Henry down left-hand side with a chance to send Solanke through. Instead, it comes to Tillman. He'll find Clark. This will do it. Jack for the dagger. Game over. Bournemouth for into the next round. Jack Clark hit the woodwork earlier. This time it's the back of the net. Bournemouth, leave it late, but get the quick fire double to ensure we're heading to the last 16. Yep, credit the lead to side, man. They withstood some pressure and did pretty well to take us almost all the way to a replay. But in the end, we do make it through. And there we go. Last 16, here we come. 
you know, maybe I'm being a bit ambitious saying this, but uh, you know, we're still in the hunt for all four competitions at the moment. Yeah, I'm being way too ambitious saying that. <laughs> so uh, deadline day is here, then, and, and uh, I think I think we might make one signing. We've we've still got 40 mil in the budget, and well, if we are going to be competitive in multiple competitions, forget the Premier League, but just trying to stay in the top four race, forget the title, but the top four, then uh, yeah, we we need to make at least one more signing for the depth, I'd say. And I would say, looking at the team, um, first eleven's fine. First eleven's totally fine. But again, it is the depth. We lost Traore. We lost Billing. Uh, obviously, we replaced him with Malik Tillman, who hit the ground running. But uh, I, I still think we could do at least one more squad player, I would say. R Ryan Christie has 18 months left in his deal. He's now 30. I don't know about his long-term future here. Jaden Anthony is just a squad player. Um, but, of course, here, primarily for homegrown rulings. I wouldn't mind another midfielder that can play through the middle. He's someone's quite versatile, really. That like, versatility is so handy, and there's players like Friender who are so versatile, and being there, worth, worth their weight in gold, being able to play them with both RB, CM, CAM, RM as well. So with that being the case, if we're thinking about versatility and looking to sign another player like that, there's a name on the shortlist that I'm, I'm, I'm very, very keen on bringing in. I haven't used him in this year's FC, but... I'm a big fan of this guy. I've seen, I've seen him play for Coventry a few times. I've seen him play for Sheffield United a few times. And since the Blades went down, they haven't come back. You all know who he is. Sky Blue fans would love him back one day at the Rico. Gustavo Hamer. Big fan. Really, really versatile. Can play through the middle. Can play slightly further forward. Can play on the uh, wings as well. I, I, I think this guy would be a great fit for the team. Again, primarily for that versatility. I, I think it'd be a solid sign him. Chris Wilder reluctantly allows him to leave the championship and return to top tier football for eight million pounds. And on a free year, 33 grand a week deal. I am buzzing to have him here at Vital. He spent a few great years at the Rico of Coventry before moving on to Bramwell Lane. Now he arrives in Dorset. I'm a fan of this guy. Really, really big fan of his. Welcome to the Vitality Stadium, Gustavo Hamer. Yeah, he was born in Brazil. Uh, I don't think he's got a cap for the Netherlands, but he uh, is listed as a Netherlands player. Um, but yeah, born in Brazil, uh, so can speak multiple different languages. And with the guy's versatility and his adaptability, I love that. I really do. Freestyle, freestyle, high, high work rates and green all across the board. You know, I love that. This is my sort of player. Happy to have him, mainly just for the score, but he'll still get some minutes, I'm sure. Welcome to Bourne with Gustavo Hamer. And our budget now down to £30 million, but I'm going to let that carry over until the new season. As we talked about it before, like just because you've got the money doesn't mean you need to spend it. Like I said, I, uh, I learned that the hard way as PSV want Ryan Christie, but I'm going to keep him for at least the end of the season and try and sell him in the summer. Uh, but better to learn it late rather than, uh, than never, right? So um, yeah, we'll leave that money and that will carry, carry over to the new season and that will give us an even bigger budget to work with uh, whatever kind of situation we are in for next year. So, all right, I'm happy with that. Lost two good players, but bought in two good players as well. Traore and Billing leave, but in come Tillman and Hamer. And let's go a bit for Jacob Greaves on the final hour from Brighton. Can't can't do anything about it now, though, because, of course, the, uh, the the final hour is here. Um, we wouldn't send him anyway. Even so. That's one thing I do hope EA look into in the future. Like in, in Football Manager, for example, when it comes down, it's not one by one by one in terms of hours. But anyway, the top deals on deadline now. I'll get to that in a minute. Well, oh my goodness gracious me. Um, well, I think Nottingham Forest might be getting docked even more points. £78.3 million deal as Man City's uh, Bernardo Silva has gone to the city ground. All right, okay. Uh, Sasha Bowie, great fullback in this year's game, has moved from Bayern to Barca, 58.5 mil. And Nico Schlotterbeck has moved within Germany and gone from Dortmund to, um, to Leverkusen. Well, that's completely thrown me. Uh, that's completely thrown me. I was going to say that I, I, I wish, as the window slammed shut, I wish that... Um, on the final hour, you could you, it would go down in increments of 15 minutes. You could still possibly do like a last hour deal in terms of selling players. Because you can sign players within the same second, basically, in, uh, in career mode. Because um, the hours don't advance. But of course, to sell players, you need a minimum of two to three hours. But uh, anyway, um, uh, 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 look at the youth squad. That's completely thrown me. Look at the youth squad. And uh, you'll see Ben McKenzie still looking the best. And Frank Rosti, uh, the second best in what is our gap year from scouting this season with uh, with Bournemouth. I'm still super excited about this guy, man. Right, following game, first outside the window, Leicester at home as we aim to make it four wins on the trot in all competitions. Bournemouth finally starting to get some form. Let's keep it going. Oh, so okay, well done, mate. 
And Cunha go left, because that'll open up space. There we go. And now we'll roll it through, and that should be 1-0. Pedro Neto, there we go. I, I, I say it a lot, but sometimes... So, so basically, what I did there is you, you press the... So on PlayStation, you press the L1 button to ask for a run. And then what you can do is you can use the right stick and flick that in the direction you want that player making the run to make. And that there... For Dominic Solanke, as I mentioned before, is such a, a handy tool when you're running through there and you're trying to drag covering defenders away. Use the man that's side by side to you or just in front, not as the player you intend to pass the ball to, but to be the dummy runner and to take defenders away. And I can open up the space like I did there, which allowed me to roll through Pedro Nato. 1 0, Bournemouth in front. Yeah, I don't tend to like to give tips on how to be a better player on the game. I don't mind giving tips on how to make the game more enjoyable. Uh, but in terms of becoming a better player, there's so many better players out there than, uh, than me, obviously. I'm just an entertainer. But um, but yeah, uh, that, that is one brief tip I don't mind giving. Because it's really helped my game over the years. If I can slide that through to Solanke, this should make it too. Yes! And that has been a, uh, a big, big boost to my improvement when playing the game as well. Anyway, Dominic Solanke doubles up and makes it. I think this is his 11th goal in the Premier League this season now. And that is going to do it. Cherries are going to make it four wins on the chart in all competitions. Finally, after such a tough run of form, we found that light at the end of the tunnel. And we're starting to roll once again. Huge three points. And whilst we are three points on the top four, at least we are now starting to get that separation between the teams outside of the top seven European places. And that, to me, is the most important thing of the lot. Right, following game. Uh, struggling Wolves away at Molyneux. Newly promoted, but right now in the bottom three. Let's get another big win here and make it five on the trot as we continue this good run of form. Come on, you cherries. Very cool to see a, uh, a couple of uh, players that were sort of big, big, big signings for us in, in my last two career modes with Almeria and Swansea in the Wolves lineup, Sergio Camello, who was in our Almeria team, who was really important, and Morton Hjolman, who was so good in the Swansea save as well. It's always nice when you see that. I say it often, but like when, when you see a player that you signed in one of your former saves, oh, it's Hjolman, to be fair, he isn't going to be in my good books now after that tackle on Tyler Adams leaves the American down. When you, when you, when you see one lining up for the other team, it's like Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at me, where you're like... Whoa, 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 there he is. <laughs> but, um, yes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's cool when you see it. But, um, frustratingly, Shulman <laughs> just injured Adams and probably for a little bit longer than five days as Wolves do go in front. Huang He Chan with the opener. Gary O'Neill side draw first blood at Molyneux. Vinny wins it back. And now Tyler, can we get a late chance here for a, for a leveller? Adams to Solanke. Dom, Dom, Solanke, denied by Jose Sar. Still time, but need that leveller. And there we go, we don't get a lever in the end. Wolves grind out the 1 0 and a massive win in their bid to stay up. I often say it, these are the games you look back on at the end of the season if you failed your league objective as to why you didn't come through. Not your losses at the Etihad or Anfield, but these games here that should have been wins and are end up doing defeats. Massive loss that. Not ending on that, let's play one more. Oh, and how about was the injury? Oh, sprained knee for Tyler. So, okay, well, it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. And that's another big, big plus to having Gustavo Hamo, who can fill straight in in, uh, in that CDM spot. Or for Endrup, who's been big, and I'll probably start him, to be fair, in the following game. Before we get it, though, I think we've got the draw for the Europa League last 16 here. Yes, we do. So let's do it together. In the last 16 Europa League, we will take on... No, I mean, maybe it wasn't. Oh, no, it was the FA Cup. Oh, sorry, it was the FA Cup. Not the Europa League. The FA Cup. Last 16, we got... Oh, no! <laughs> Possibly the favourites, both in uh, real life and the same as well. Manchester City at the Etihad. Toughest tie we could have had. To be fair, we've had our luck in the Cup tie, so I can't complain. Yep, our final game today, Arsenal at home. Massive contest to close out today's episode here with a dress rehearsal for the EFL Cup final. If we are to get back in the top four race, this is a game we simply can't afford to lose. Gunners in Dorset aiming to avoid the back-to-back -back losses. Come on, you cherries. So me and my friends last week did this uh, top three Premier League teams draft thing. It was really, really fun. So basically, we just picked a player each from the top three teams. Uh, no restrictions on how many players you can have from a team or 
or what position you start with. Just a, just a simple straight draft between the top three teams. And it was really, really fun. Good, good banter. And we were thinking about possibly doing some for YouTube as well. Saka fires in the opener. They're not YouTubers, they're not social media people, but we've been friends since childhood, and it was it was really, really fun. The team that I picked, I, in fact, I, I, I might put it on the screen for you right now. It wasn't great. <laughs> I said to the boys, I said, it's pure chaos. It could finish as champions or ninth, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were thinking we might do some, some drafts uh, for, for YouTube. So keep, keep your eyes peeled. We, uh, we might do some together in, uh, in the near, near future. Great, great fun, I must say. And worth, worth doing with your friends as well. You can start with the top three from the Premier League teams if you want. It's, it's, it's a really, really fun game. You can just do through WhatsApp or text messages, you know. It's really hard as well because, like, you, you have in your mind, like, you start building your team. You start thinking about the shape. You start thinking about the system. You're like, oh, okay, if I pick him now, if I get this lad here, and if he doesn't pick him, I can have him and so on. And um, he, you're about to make that selection that, that fits the jigsaw puzzle. And then uh, your mate picks him in <laughs> the pick before you. There was a moment for me, like I was building my team, and I was like, oh, if I can get Robertson. Oh, no, yeah, John just picked him. And then the next one, I was like, well, if Gabriel's still available, oh, no, he's just gone. <laughs> it was really fun. Um, def definitely recommend playing with your mates, man. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we we're definitely thinking about doing some drafts for YouTube. Just keep your eyes peeled on that. Anyway, still 1-0 here as we look for a leveler. And if we do lose this one here, we're going to be in a bit of trouble, man. The chasing pack gaining ground. We need at least a draw here. We've got to find that equaliser. Still plenty of time. Oh, what a ball! Cunha! Oh, what a miss! But we've got to hit the back of the net and find that leveller. Oh, still time, but no. Arsenal, I think, are going to close this out. Oh, come on, come on. Last chance, last chance, last chance. No, 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 no. Gunners will grind it out. And, oh, this could do it. Martinelli around his man. Lunin thinks about it. Rolled across. Oh, what a save. What a save. Jesus took Agas of time. What a save. And it's not going to matter because Odegaard will get it back and wrap it up. Arsenal get the win. 2-0. They win the dress rehearsal and it's back-to-back -back losses. Just don't capitulate now. Big defeats, but don't capitulate. It seemed as though we turned a corner with Bournemouth after a nice winning run, but the back-to-back -back losses are an unfriendly reminder that progress over time isn't always linear. Challenges will always arise, and with Manchester City away at the Etihad next, it's not getting any easier. But stay strong, stay resilient, and remind yourself that this too shall pass. But that will do it for today's episode, guys, so massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Once more to you all, have a fantastic day. I will return in the next episode with more big games and league aim to get back to form the FA Cup last 16 away at the Etihad as well the draw for the Europa League last 16 where we might squeeze in the first leg and of course we'll have Bournemouth's first ever EFL Cup final as we place Arsenal at Wembley aiming to win back to back major honours for the first time in club history much love guys and I'll see you for the next episode very soon